So welcome to the Wonders of Watercolour where every week we provide you with tutorials to help you grow on your watercolour journey. So this week we're going to be doing something a little bit different. I thought we could try to create our own kind of colouring page um, or something a little bit more illustrative rather than our usual botanical painting tutorials. Um, we do have other things as well but this week we're going to do something really cool. So what I thought we'd do is um, paint this foxglove using Inktense pencils. Now you can use watercolour to do this but I really like this kind of um, almost cartoon type look of this foxglove that we've got here. We're going to trace this down onto our paper and then using the Inktense pencils to create this beautiful um, finished piece. So this painting tutorial is all about being relaxed with your painting, experimenting a little bit, maybe going outside your comfort zone with maybe intense pencils and just see how you get on. So this is the image that I'll provide you with and this is going to be available for everyone and I'll tell you later on how you can obtain this for free as well as the reference photograph that I'm taking my colours from. And I'll tell you later on how you can obtain these. Normally we provide these digital versions uh, just for our patrons but this week I'm going to give this to all of you. It's not a botanical painting so I'm going to let everybody have access to that this week. So let's talk about colours first of all. I've done these swatches here. Um, I've swatched them out in the way that I kind of like that colour palette to look. And here is a rundown of all the pencils that I'm going to be using. Now you can use watercolour if you want um, to, but I'm going to be using the following colours. Sherbet Lemon, Thistle, Deep Rose, Iron Green, Ink Black, Dusky purple, apple green, and I'm going to use a couple of my fine liner pens, but we'll talk about that a little bit later. I've got a size eight and a size three. I've done a rough pencil sketch. All I've done is I've printed this out, scribbled on the back with a, an HB pencil, taped it onto my watercolour paper with my washi tape. I use a 0.5 mechanical pencil and I just trace it down that way. It's the old school way of doing your trace downs. No fancy equipment needed. All you'll need is a printer. So I've done the hard work for you. I've drawn out the image as you can see. We've got this beautiful foxglove. So the next thing we need to do is outline this. Now remember, this isn't a botanical painting. It's just kind of like an illustration of this beautiful piece. I'm going to start by using the widest that I have. And this is my number eight. This is a 08 size pen. This one's from Etcher. The important thing to note is that you must use a waterproof pen because once you've got this on your paper, you don't want it to bleed into the paint. Although we're not using watercolour as such, this is a water-based medium and you don't want it to blur into that paper. So I'm using a 300 GSM watercolour paper. This one's on a block, so you don't have to tape it down onto your watercolour board. I've got a clean glass of water for when I'm ready to start painting and a nice scented candle which is optional. Um, we're just going to outline this. Now what you need to do when you're outlining your imagery is try to keep that pen line nice and steady and straight. So you don't want any sketchy edges, you just want it to be really solid and bold. I can see that I've gone slightly askew here. So you want to try and keep these edges together and just go over your pencil line, creating these firm shapes. I'm going to speed this up for you. So there we have our basic outline that I've done with the number 8 or 0 0.8 pen. Now I'm going to go to my 0 0.3. So all we've done here is a nice simple line drawing with that. Now we're going to go in with the number 3 to just add the rest of the detail. So all I'm doing is using these kind of flicky motions to just show the kind of direction of the plant and you can also use this finer pen to add any detail that you want to. Now this is your opportunity to be as creative as you want to be. I'm just adding the detail as you can see. We can have a little bit of, I've got slightly wrong here, we can just add a bit of detail here and there. So we have this bit coming down. So where we have these little circles you can put one or two of them in. You know like foxgloves have these patterns on them. And then showing the direction, I'm just going to do these flicky lines so you have this really pretty illustrative look. 
So coming down. And of course, once you've got your outline traced, you can keep using it. It's entirely up to you how much detail you put in with this. You can make it your own and have fun with it. I'm just showing the direction of a little few of these. Kind of come down. You can also use it to do a bit of shading. Some lines coming down just to show the direction of the lights, which is coming in this way. And inside of these areas, we can do a few little squiggles. Now, as I said at the start of this video, you don't have to have um, intense pencils if you don't want to do it with that. You could use watercolour and you can make the washes as bold or as light as you want to. Nothing too accurate here. Remember, this is just a pretty outline so that you're literally colouring in this beautiful foxglove and enjoying the process. Maybe you're new to watercolour painting, maybe you don't want anything too complicated. This is the ideal place to start off and play around with watercolour, making it your own. So we're just going to have some little lines here and there. Now every week on this channel we create new content. In fact we have over 150 tutorials at the time of filming. So if this is something that you like um, and you like watercolour painting you may want to consider subscribing to our channel and hitting the little bell on the side there so that you'll be notified every week when we upload. We upload on a Tuesday and if you subscribe and hit that bell you'll be notified every time I upload new content and then you won't miss any tutorials. I'm going to do another one here. Just add a few in. I think that's looking fairly nice. So I'm just going to give that a minute or two to sink into the paper. Well, you don't want to add your watercolour medium while it's still wet. You need to give it a minute or two to sink in, let it dry completely and then we can start adding some colour to this beautiful piece. I, like, I really like to swatch out the colours mixed up so that I can have a rough idea of the kind of colour palette that I'm going to achieve with the colours. But I do recommend, if you have intense pencils, I do recommend that you swatch them out and see which colours, um, how they look on the paper because they can look really different to the way they look in the actual pencil. So do swatch them out and uh, take a look. We have got quite a few intense tutorials. I'll put them at the end of this video on playlist so that you can check them out. So at the start of this video I mentioned that I provide you with this uh, printable. So there are a couple of ways that you can have access to this. So I'm going to put it right at the end of this video so that you can pause the video, screenshot it and you can print it out that way. Or you can join our private Facebook group. We're also called The Wonders of Watercolour where you can print it out that way as well. In fact you can have access to all of our traceables um, over on that Facebook group as well as the reference photographs and you can post your finished paintings from our YouTube tutorials so that you can have some feedback from me, my wonderful team and um, our fantastic members of our group. So do consider joining us and I'll link everything in the description box underneath this video. Okay so there are a few ways that you can use intense pencils and the way I like to use them is quite simply to swatch them out onto a piece of paper and see where we go. Now to start with I'm going to be using this kind of um, lemony colour. So I'm going to start with the sherbet lemon and all I'm going to do is scribble it out on my paper like this and to that I'm going to add some greens. So this is uh, apple green and the other green that I've picked out is iron green. So we've got three green colours here. I'm going to be using my number eight size brush. Use whichever brush that you have, something that you feel really comfortable with. And I've got some kitchen paper here as well. I'm using my number eight size round. If you are interested in this brush, I will put a link in the description box underneath this video. Um, these will come in a set, but more news about that later. But this is a number eight round. It's a watercolour brush, but you can use them for ink tents and um, gouache and that kind of thing. Okay, so let's talk about putting the colour onto this. Now I want this to have a really sort of blockish colour. I don't want sketchy edges or anything like that. So once I've applied the colour onto my watercolour paper, I'm just picking it up and we're taking this over the lighter areas of some of these buds. So we want this to go all over the bud area like this. Stay within that line. If you wanted to take this lighter green on top of these, you can do because we're painting over them just to give it another glaze. Glaze is, it, glazing is when we paint a colour on top of another colour. So you can put this in. You can use your intense pencils directly onto your watercolour paper or whichever paper that you're using. I do recommend that you use a nice quality watercolour paper for this though. I'm not going to take it to any of these but I'm going to go into my greens. You can see I mix them together here and I'm just going to drop a little bit of that in. 
just using the tip of my brush. We're still going to be layer, layering these up. You can layer ink tents in the same way that you can layer watercolour. You can see you can even use them wet and wet, just to drop that colour in. Picking these two together, dropping it in. You can have a nice blurry edge. And this time, mixing the two colours and coming down. We're going to be layering these colours up. So don't worry if they're not quite the right colour. So we're just colouring that in. Going to leave that a minute because we don't want it to blur into that. And I'm going to pick a lighter colour for the little leaf here. The great thing about ink tents is that they don't, ink tents doesn't lift off in the way that watercolour does. So if you are struggling with watercolour, then I highly recommend using these because once they're dry, they're dry, they won't lift off. When you've activated the ink with your watercolour brush, the activated section won't reactivate. You'll need to keep putting your ink down, okay? So once this is dry, I won't be able to lift it off. That's the great part about it. So. It's still wet, so we can drop in some more colour here on the top part of these little buds. But once it's dry, I'll need to reactivate that ink by applying more. Really, really versatile medium and just wonderful if you do struggle a little bit with watercolour. And they do build up really, really nicely. Actually, I'm going to go with thistle next. So this is our thistle. I'm going to add to that a tiny bit of deep rose. Now, there's nothing wrong with applying these straight onto the paper, but you, do t you could get some marks on your paper there. So again, we want a nice light wash and I'm taking this into some of the middle section. Now I know some of the middle is white, but that's okay. We're all about having fun today and we're not worrying about making it look realistic. This one is actually lemon, so I'm gonna take more of a lemony wash here, like that. So this is actually an ink. You can use them on a number of surfaces as well. Really, really versatile medium. You don't have to use them on watercolour paper. You can use them on fabrics. I think you can use them ceramics. So it's textiles, all, all that kind of stuff, you know? Really, really versatile. And with the darker colour, the brighter colour, I'm just dropping it in, wet in wet. So that paint is still wet. Even gonna put some here, dropping it in. And you can do this with watercolour as well. So don't worry if you haven't got ink tense pencils. You don't have to go out and buy all the equipment that I'm using. I'm a great advocate of use what you have within your own set, okay? So make it your own, have fun. We're just dropping that in. And you can use a damp brush, clean your brush, pat it dry, and then use that damp brush while that paint is damp to maneuver it around where you want it to go. So if you've got any untidy edges, Now's the time. Okay, so with this darker colour, so this will be thistle, we can start to add some dots around the dots. And we've got a few in here. Just dot them in. And now I'm going to mix a little bit of shading. So we've got our ink black with a beautiful colour called so dusky purple. So dusky purple. You can see how dark that looks on the scribble card there, but look at that colour. Beautiful. I'm going to put a little bit of black. I'm going to add black on the side in case I need it to add some a uh, different value to those. I'm um, just going to pick up a little bit of dusky purple with a little bit of black and some really subtle colours here. I'm going to get these in. I'm just going around some of the shapes here. When this is dry, I'm going to take this inside the, the flowers, but we're just going to blend that out. So you clean your brush. Pat it onto the kitchen paper so that it is just damp and then using that damp brush you can move that around and get rid of any hard edges that you want to maybe soften through. You must do that when your ink tents is wet. If you do it when it's dry it's not going to budge. That is one of the things about ink tents that we love is that it does give you that ability to blend up as I said before. If you are new here we do upload every Tuesday, as I mentioned earlier on. We do a lot of botanicals on this channel and a sort of detailed work. But if you are interested in really progressing your skills as a watercolorist and you particularly like botanicals, we do have a Patreon where every month 
we create longer tutorials, more in depth and a lot slower paced, usually in about two or three sections. We also have a mentorship level. So if you want some coaching from me, you can join that level. They are exclusive to my patrons and you won't find them on YouTube. So in case that's of interest to you, let's just take a little look at what you get. Are you an aspiring artist looking to take your skills to the next level? Or perhaps you're looking for fresh inspiration? Then you may want to consider joining our Patreon. Our Patreon tutorials have much more in-depth instructions and are a much slower pace and depending on the membership level you choose, you can have personalised feedback from me and video calls. Unlike our YouTube tutorials, our Patreon art classes focus on really learning the art of botanical painting and I will guide you step by step through the technique and skills you will need to learn and improve your botanical art. All of our Patreon tutorials are exclusive to my patrons and you won't find them on YouTube. So why not join up to our Patreon and start creating botanical art you can be truly proud of. So you can leave and join anytime, it's entirely up to you. If that appeals to you then check us out over there. So we're back to these two colours, I'm dipping in and out and I'm just adding a little bit of shading to these top ones. Okay, we're not going to go to the photograph, we're just adding a little bit of interest, making it pretty. Cleaning my brush, patting it dry and blending it out. And sometimes you don't want to do anything too stressful. It's nice to have a fun project to do, right? I do feel that these need a bit more colour, so I'm going to go back to my sherbet lemon. And I'm going to glaze over some of these. They are sort of semi-dry, we can go over and just give that a uniformity. I felt that they're looking too separated from the top section. Again, we're not colour accurate here. Notice by glazing over that colour, that rosy colour, we've now changed that to a more vibrant, beautiful looking shade. So look how well these glaze over one another. They do have to be dry, and this kind of makes it look more uniform. So it's not the same colour as the photo, but that doesn't matter. Let's have fun. So it's already looking really pretty. I'm just going to add a bit more pink to these. Again, making them look a bit more uniform. Completely changed my mind. And <laughs> just blend that through. Be e go easy with this. Um, go easy with sherbet lemon. It is quite strong and I don't want it to be too lemony. So just drop this in. So do you enjoy working with ink tense pencils or do you prefer watercolour? Well, perhaps you've tried both. Let me know in the comments which one you prefer if you've tried both mediums. Um, we all have our preferences, don't we? Let me know in the comments which ones you like the best. Dropping this in around that darker values. Drop them in. And I'm going to let this dry completely before we can start building up more more layers. So everything is more or less dry enough, dry enough to add a little bit more shading to the top parts of the flowers. So let's go back to these mixes here. We've got a little bit of that ink black with a tiny bit of dusky purple and we can start to build up a little bit of tonal value here and there. Like I said, nothing too fancy here. We're just going to be winging it today and just adding a bit more detail, a bit more shape to give it a bit more shape and form. So nothing too fancy. Okay, but remember once you've activated that ink, you'll need to add more for it to, um, to be reactivated. So when we've drawn in these little lines, we can start to maybe fill them in a little bit. Just dip in between the black and the purple and sometimes just mixing them together. Okay, you want just a darker value and you can vary them a little bit if you want to. So that's a little bit too strong. I want to keep it nice and light. So of course when you water down black you get a nice kind of grey tone. Using the tip of this brush, this brush has a really lovely fine tip. You can add lots of detail just by one brush. Okay and now you've got to ask yourself if you want to add a bit more detail to the inside area before we add the pattern that's inside there. Blend out those lines. I do feel that it needs a little bit so I'm going to mix a tiny bit of the dusky purple with a tiny bit of the deep rose and the thistle, doesn't matter which. And with this colour you can go inside that line. So that line's now dry, so you can go inside to give that illusion. Just like that. Clean your brush, blend it out. 
If you use a good quality or a reasonable quality watercolour paper with this, you should find that your layers layer up really nicely without the paper disintegrating. If you do use a sort of not the best quality watercolour paper, and I'm not going, I'm not suggesting you go out and buy decent paper, but it does make a difference. I promise you, you will see that difference because you don't want your paper to start pilling and disintegrating. You want it to hold that paint really well, whether it's watercolour or whether it be ink tents that we're using today. You want it to really hold that paint. So carry on. Let's go back to our darker green and add a darker colour to some of these. So this is black mixed in with a tiny bit of that beautiful iron green. So we can just drop this in. And you can keep building it up and having fun with it, you know. Just carry on mixing these colours, darker value here. And you can still keep layering them up. If you want to add a little bit more yellow, that needs blending through a little bit. I'm going to pick up thistle. Thistle is a nice purpley pinky tone. And I'm just going to drop around these little dots. It's going to blur because it's wet paint on some of the areas. And just play around with it. Have fun with it. Watercolour painting, any painting, any anything that you're using your imagination and getting paint onto paper. What a lovely way to spend time without worrying that it's not perfect, okay? It's about enjoying it. And remember, we, we have a kind of learn to paint as you paint method over here on the Wonders of Watercolour. So it's for all levels. You don't have to be an expert at watercolour or anything like that. We teach you as you're painting. So I'm gonna add a tiny bit of pink to the top here as well, because that's what I feel like doing. I think it looks nice. Not colour accurate. We're going to add a little bit of that Jusky purple because I like that too. Notice how well they build up. A little bit of pink. Changing up those colours and the layering here is beautiful. You can just keep on building them, keep on having fun with them until you're happy. I'm going to let this dry completely. I need a bit more of this gorgeous apple green. And we're going to glaze over that as well. Brightening up those colours. We've gone from really subtle colours to really dark. So I'm kind of winging it today. Normally as a botanical artist, I tend to really stick to my photo. But sometimes, you know, it's nice to loosen up, get outside your comfort zone and really have fun. Darker values here and there. And we're going to come back. This is kind of semi-dry and another way that you can use Inktense pencils is directly onto the paper. So I'm using Deep Rose and you can put this on some of the little dots that you've circled in. If you find that the little wet on wet marks are a little bit too subtle and you want to add a bit more zhuzh to your painting, you can add straight onto the paper like this. Now if your paper is still damp, it's going to really, really stick to that paper because Inktense pencils, when they are applied to damp paper, you get a lot of pigment payoff, far more that you would do than you would do if you're just scribbling it onto your paper like this. You see it comes out a lot, the pigment payoff is a lot more. So be careful, if you want a subtle look, then you must wait for it to dry completely. I'm just gonna put one or two of these in. Okay, so I now have my gel pen. Like I said, you haven't gotta do this. I just happen to have one in my kit and I do use them quite a lot. This one's from Uniball. It's a Signo and it's broad. It's got a broad tip and this is great for any details, any fine detail that you wanna add a bit of white. Um, so I'm gonna go in with this. It's really subtle if you want to do that. Again, in between those lines that you put in earlier. And just a tiny bit. And then where we put these tiny little dots in, we can put squiggly lines around them. We have got that black line as well, so you haven't got to do this. If you don't have one of these pens, don't worry. You can leave them as they are. It's meant to be fun. It's meant to be an illustration. It's meant to be a colouring in session. Paper is still a little bit damp, so this is absorbing into the paper. But you can go around these. You might need to let it dry completely and do them again. 
this dry, and let it dry a minute or two and then add some more. So because I was so impatient, as you can see, because I've outlined them on wet paper or damp paper, it hasn't shown up. So I'm going to go back over now that it's dry and do the same thing again. <laughs> once, you've, once you've outlined them on dry paper, it will show up a lot better. You can even go in between them, of course, if you want to just add a little bit of white. This one's still a little bit damp. If you have enjoyed this video, could I ask you please to give me a thumbs up? It's a way of letting YouTube know that you enjoy my content. And remember to subscribe and hit that notification bell so that you'll be notified each time I upload new content. Remember to stay right until the end of this video. Remember to join our Facebook group so that you can share your finished works and also stay until right until the end where I'll put up a playlist and also I'll show you the line drawing and reference photographs so you can pause them and print them out and have fun yourself. Let's just take a minute to appreciate the finished painting and I'll say thank you for watching and I'll see you soon.